Welcome to the ninth and the last part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. Now that our photos are finished and we have exported them out of Lightroom, there's still a couple more things that I want to talk about that didn't quite fit into the other parts of this tutorial series. In this video, we'll go over how to create presets from your edits, how to copy edits from one photo to another, and how to create virtual copies that can be really helpful while testing out different things for your edits. So let's start off with the presets. So first of all, I'm gonna deselect all of my photos by clicking on the gray area here, and then I'll select the photo that I want to use for the preset and then I'll go over to the develop module. So now when we go here over to where it says presets, we have this little plus icon next to the presets tab. So click on that plus and then you can just click on a create preset. In here, first of all, you can rename your preset and then you can select which group of presets you want to save it to, or you can also create a new group. So groups are basically folders for organizing your presets into categories. So for example, if you have a drone and a regular camera, but the photos you take with them are very different, you can create different presets groups for those different types of cameras to store your presets under that one group. Now next up is the auto setting. So if we select that Lightroom will automatically deselect the exposure settings here and instead it will use the automatic exposure tweaks that Lightroom has built in. So I would always have the auto settings deselected and just manually select what I want to have selected for the presets. So next up on the list is treatment and profile. So as I said earlier on in this tutorial series, profiles are kind of like presets for your photos, but I never change the profile that I edit in. So it doesn't matter to me if I keep this checked or unchecked. So if you did change the profile for your edit and you want to include that profile in the preset, just select this box. Now next up you have all of these different settings that you can select or deselect for your presets. So basically any type of edits that you've done to your photo can be selected for the preset, but there are some things that I personally would not recommend including in a preset. For example, the upright transforms always work a bit differently for each single photo, depending on the perspective of the original photo, so this is something that I would always uncheck from my presets. Now, the masking would depend on the photo and the preset that I'm creating, but I want to have the mask that I created for this photo included in the preset, so I'll just go ahead and select that. Now, one more thing that I want to do is I want to enable the curves for this preset, because curves, as as I've said earlier, is a very powerful tool and I want to include that in all of my edits. So that's a major part of any edit that I make, so it's also a major part of any preset that I create. Now below the settings you have an advanced settings box with two options. So the support amount slider will add an amount slider to your preset, which is kind of like the opacity of the preset or the strength of the preset. So you can make your preset stronger or weaker depending on the amount slider that you tweak. Now there is no harm in having this checked, so I would just always leave it on because there's no harm in having the amount slider for your preset because you can just leave it as it is but if you need to, you can then tweak the amount. Now you can see that the create ISO adaptive preset is grayed out. So let's actually go back to our library and select a couple of photos and then go back to develop and then create a preset. And now we have the create ISO adaptive preset option available because this option will look at the ISO value of the photo that you've taken and then adjust the preset according to that ISO value. So basically, if you have the noise reductions on your preset, Lightroom will adjust the noise reduction to be higher when you're using a higher ISO and lower when you're using a lower ISO. And when you're happy with all of the settings that you have, just click on create and now you have a new preset in your presets folder. Now, if you've bought some presets online from, for example, your favorite YouTuber or your favorite photographer, you can click this plus icon and hit import presets and then just navigate to the folder where you have those presets stored and this way you can bring the presets into Lightroom. So that's it for presets. Now next up, what if you want to copy settings from one image to another? So first of all, I want to go back to the library to deselect all of these other photos and then just have this photo selected and go back to the develop panel. Now down here, you can see the previews and the reset buttons for this image. So if I click on reset, that will obviously reset the photo to the original state. But if I now select a different photo, so for example, let's go to this photo and then click on the previews button. Now this will copy all of the settings that I had in the photo that we just had open to this new photo. Now, obviously this is a bit bright, so I could just tweak the exposure a little bit down. Oh, and by the way, the way I tweak the exposure there is I just hovered over the exposure slider and then I used the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard to go in 0.1 increments. So clicking on this previous button here will always copy the settings from the previous photo that you had open. But do keep in mind, if you have the healing tool used, 
you'll create some very weird stuff with the healing tool. And that's also the loading bar that you saw there is updating all of the AI tools that I have used for the edits, including AI masks and AI object removal. But what if I want to copy the settings from one photo to many photos at once? We can go back to the library module by hitting G on our keyboard. And then first of all, selecting the photo that we want to copy the edits from to the other photos. Then holding down command on Mac or control on Windows, click on all of the photos that you want to copy the settings to. Now down here you have sync and sync settings. So the sync button will synchronize all of the metadata, which is not what we want. We want to click on the sync settings to synchronize the edits that we've done. Now in here we can select all of the settings that we want to copy over to the other images. So once again, I'm going to select the curves, but I want to deselect my transforms and I also want to deselect my healing tools and the cropping tool and I want to select the masking and also I want to deselect the lens corrections and now we're fine to synchronize the settings. So I'll just hit synchronize and Lightroom will apply all of these edits to the other images. Now these don't look too good because the image that we used for this tutorial is a drone shot and it's a very different type of a shot than these ones that were taken on a DSLR but I can just simply edit these a bit to make them look a little bit better. So we could quite easily make this look a lot better from these copied settings. So Lightroom is a non-destructive software, so you can always go back and forth to tweak anything that you've done. Nothing gets saved into the image before you export things out. Now in Lightroom, you can also edit multiple photos at the same time. So first of all, go to library module and then select all of the photos that you want to edit. Then go back to develop and down here you can see this auto sync button. Now if you can't see it, just click on this switch and it will toggle between the sync and the auto sync modes. And now any changes that I do to this image will also get applied to the other images here. Now this can be a very handy way to edit multiple photos at once, but it may make your computer a little bit slower. So personally, I would always just create the edit for one photo and then copy the settings over to the rest of the photos. Now, if we had the auto sync setting turned off and we had the sync mode on, if we do any tweaks to this image, they won't get applied to the rest of the images. But now when I click on sync, it will synchronize the settings from the photo that you see on the screen at that time to the rest of the images that have been selected. And that's a few ways how you can copy settings from one image to another. Now, next up, I want to show you virtual copies, which are a great way to test out different types of edits for your photos. So let's go back to the library module and right click on the image that you want to create the virtual copy of. Now down here in the menu, you can see create virtual copy. And this will create a new photo of that same photo to our library. This is actually not a new file, it's just a secondary link to the original image that you have stored somewhere on your computer or on your hard drive. Now, when I do any changes to this virtual copy, none of those tweaks will get applied to the original image. So now I have two very different versions of this edit in Lightroom. So if you want to test out multiple different styles for the photo that you're editing, you can really easily do it with a virtual copy without destroying anything with the original edit or with the original image. Now you can create as many virtual copies as you want to, and you can test out as many different things as you want to with your edits with these virtual copies. And when you hover over them, you can see how many virtual copies you've created. And if you click on this number here, it will collapse all of those virtual copies into a stack. So if you have a lot of virtual copies and you want to keep your library more organized, you can group them into stacks so that you don't have to view all of them at the same time. Now, if you want to de-stack this, just click on the number here and it'll show all of the virtual copies for you. Now, if you can't see these numbers, just select all of them, right click and go to stacking and group into stack. And this will turn them into a stack that is either opened or closed. Now, when you're finished with all of your settings for your virtual copies and you go ahead and export them, all of the virtual copies will become their own exported images. So now you have four different versions of that same photo. I really love to use virtual copies, especially for creating different crops of the same image. So for example, if I'd have the landscape photo as the like full photo, I could create an Instagram crop from the second photo like this, and then do something like that. And now this would be my Instagram post photo, obviously this doesn't look too good, so that's better. And then I could have, for example, a square crop from one of these photos just to put somewhere else, for example, a 
print on the wall if I would want to have a square print. And now that I have these three different crops here, I could just select them all and export them all out at once. And now I would have three different images with different crops. Now going back to the library module, if you right click on your image, there's a couple of handy things in here that you can do to your images. From here as well, you can go to edit in Photoshop if you need to. And also you have the photo merge option in here. Now this is grayed out unless you have multiple photos selected. So let's just select for example, these two and then go to photo merge and we can create an HDR, a panorama or an HDR panorama out of these images. So let's, for example, click on HDR and Lightroom will create the HDR preview of this photo. Now, obviously, this is not going to look really good because this is not a true HDR. It's the same photo, just edited in a different way. But if you ever need to create HDRs or panoramas, this is where you would do it. Just import all of your original images for the HDR or the panorama, right click on them in the library module and then select photo merge and the option that you want to use. Now there's one more thing in the menu that I want to show you, which is really cool. So if you right click on the photo and then go to enhance, it'll open up a new tab where you've got the options to denoise. And this is the same AI denoiser that you have in the develop module. So you don't really have to worry about this. But what I think is cool here is the super resolution, which will just enhance the resolution of your image. Now you can click and hold on the image to see the before and the after of the super resolution effect. So without enhancing, it looks very soft, but with the enhancing, it looks extremely sharp and crispy. Now, if I click on enhanced, Lightroom will create a new file with that enhanced super resolution for me. In here, we can see these two files and one is the original and one is the super resolution file. And if I click on I for information, you can see the file name now has enhanced super resolution in the file name, whereas the original doesn't obviously have that. So that will tell you which one is the enhanced version and which one is the original image. Basically, the super resolution will just create new pixels into your image in enhancing the resolution and the image quality of that photo. And that concludes my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. I know Lightroom is a massive software to get into, but I hope this video series helped you out in getting started at least. Now, if you have any questions about anything that has to do with Lightroom, just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. Now, if you watch this whole series, all the way through to the end. I really want to thank you so much. It means a lot to me that you've sticked around to the end. I would also really appreciate getting feedback. So if there's anything that I did wrong in this, if there's anything you didn't like, or if there's things that you really liked about this series, just drop a comment down below and tell me how I did, because I would really love to get feedback from you guys to improve my work in the future. But once again, thank you so much for watching this series. That really means a lot to me. I hope this video series helped you out with Lightroom Classic. But that is all I have for today and all I have for this Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. I hope I will see you on this channel in the future as well. Shoo.